Welcome to the fifth lecture on computational geometry. Today we want to talk about orthogonal range queries or fast access to databases. Now, in the first part we want to do 1D range searching, but first let's define what this orthogonal range query is. So assume you're part of the personal management in a company and you have a database where you store for all the people in your company how much do they earn and where were they born. So you have two properties, so that means we can model it in geometry in two dimensions. And every point here is a database entry. For example, this point here could be Mr. G. O. Meter, who was born in 1953 and earns a salary of 2,500 euros. Now some queries that you want to do is, you want, for example, to know who in your company earns between 2,000 and 3,000 euro. That's everybody who is in this strip, and who is born between 1950 and 1956, who is everybody in this strip. So the people you want to find lie in this box, and this is the query you want to do. You want to find exactly these people, and in geometry we just model it as the intersection of these um, bounded regions. And these are orthogonal queries, because each of those regions is just a strip that's well, orthogonal, so it has a horizontal and a vertical boundary. Of course, in general, you might have even more properties than two. You might also want to store how many years have they been working in the company. And then you want to extend the query, and you only, you only want to find people who have been working there for between two and four years. And then, yeah, we have a three-dimensional problem. We have three properties. We want to find an orthogonal query, a three-dimensional orthogonal query, which here is a cube. And these are typical queries for databases. You have some range. You want to find everything within this range for all these properties. And that we can solve geometrically by these orthogonal range queries. So what we have to do is we have to figure out if we have a set of points in D dimensions. And we have a set of these queries. So for every dimension, we have a range. What points do lie inside this orthogonal range query? What lies inside this cube or hypercube or rectangle? Before we can solve this in general, we first, first want to have a look at the simplest example where you only have one dimension, so we only have one property. Basically, you can store for every person in your company when were they born, and that's it. And now we want to figure out who was born between 1950 and 1956. That's my first question for you. In the 1D range searching, how do we solve this? So. Please try to find a way to pre-process a finite set of points in one dimension, so that's just values, such that for any interval that I give you, you can report quickly what points lie in this interval. The way we can do this is using the standard geometrical data structure, the balanced binary search tree. So take all our keys, every point is just a key, and place it in some balanced binary search tree. But we do one slight modification that helps us later to extend it to higher dimensions. We only store the elements in the lease. So these are all the elements we want to store. And in the internal vertices, we only store what is the maximum element in my left subtree. So here we would want to store an 11, here a 4, here an 8, here a 13, 17, 21. And now, if you give me a query, for example, give me all the elements between 6 and 21, how do I solve this? I can first look for the left boundary of this. So I can do a search in the binary search tree for element number 6. So let's start at the top, we go down here, and we will end up at this point. To query this, we always just check, well, this is the highest number in my left tree. This is larger than a 6, so if there is a 6, it has to lie in the left subtree. 11 is larger, so I go to the left. The 4 is smaller, so if there is a 6, it's in the right subtree. So we go to the right, and then we go to the left, and then we find the smallest number that's larger than 6. 
then we can find the end of this interval. So we look for 21. And we do the same thing. We go left, right, and so on. And we find the first number that's 21 or larger than. And now we want to report all the leaves that lie between this one that we found and this one that we found. Maybe this one we don't want to report if what we found here is too large. For example, if this is the 22, then with the search we would also find this key. But that we can easily filter out at the very end. That's only this one element that's the largest one that we might have to not report. And how can we quickly report all these elements here? Well, that's the, the next task. But I give you a hint. If we follow the red path and the blue path, they will always go along the same route up to some vertex we split. And as you see here, here they split up. Here the blue goes to the left, the red goes to the right. And with this split vertex we can do something. So how would you do it? How would you go on to try to report all these numbers while not taking too much time? And here we have a tree, so we could just do an in order tree walk, walk from the H up to the 11, walk up to the next key, and just walk along everything until we get to this 21. And the time that we spend would be order of height of the tree, plus however many elements we report. But we want to do something a bit smarter that we can also extend to higher dimensions later. And for that I want to use one observation. So if we look at this we split and we keep walking along this path. Whenever my blue path goes to the left, I have to take everything that lies in the right subtree. Whenever my red path goes to the right, we know that everything in the left subtree we will have to report. So all these sets here we know we have to report. And those we call canonical subsets. And how many of these do we have? At every step that the blue path takes, at every level there might be one of those. And at every level that the red path takes, there might also be one of those. So we have at most two H canonical subsets, where H is the height of the tree. And since it's a balanced binary search tree, the height is an order of log n. So we have order of log n many canonical subsets, and each canonical subset gives us an interval that contains all points stored in the subtree. So if every internal node knows exactly what elements do lie in my subtree, then with these canonical sets we can vary quickly report them by just saying, okay, these are my subsets, every subset gives me its elements, and then we're done with reporting it. And we don't have to walk through the tree structure anymore, we can directly read it from those canonical subsets. So what is the time to create this data structure? What is the space it uses? And what is the query time? That's the three questions we want to ask. First, how much time do we need to create this data structure? It's a balanced binary search tree, so we can do it in order of n log n time. And what is the space of the data structure? We have n elements that gives us n leaves. And it's a binary tree where we don't have any degree 2 vertices. So the number of internal vertices is at most n minus 1. Why is that the case? That one I can leave up to you to prove. It's not so hard to see. But the key that you need is that if you sum up the degrees of all vertices in a tree, and you have n vertices in a tree, then the sum of degrees is 2n minus 2. And from that you can easily prove that you have at most n minus 1 internal nodes here. So we have order of n log n time to create the data structure. It requires order of n space. But how much time do the queries need? Well, we need one step to do the blue query one step to do, to do the red. Both of, both of these take order of log n time. And then we find all these sets and we have to report the points. And we need some time for every point that we want to report. So the time we need is order of k plus log n, where k is the size of the output. If we have to report all the points, then we need order of n time. We cannot do it in log n. 
So this is an output sensitive algorithm. And now that we have a solution for one dimension, we want to extend it to two dimensions. And now we have points in 2D and we have a 2D orthogonal range query and we want to report the set of points inside this query. Do you have ideas how we can take this solution and extend it to 2D? In this lecture we want to look at two ideas. And those are called the KD tree and the range tree. The first one is we just use a single tree and in every step we alternate between x and y coordinate. So what we do here is that all these steps separate the points into those that lie to the left of the vertical line through 11 and those that lie to the right of it. So we split it in two halves. And the first idea here is once we split it in two halves like this and then we split it in two halves like this and so on alternatingly in all these different levels. And the second one is we have two trees. So basically we have one tree like here where we have all the x coordinates but then instead of reporting these canonical subsets all these canonical subsets give us a second tree that contains the elements but ordered by y coordinate and then we search for the y coordinates in there and this is the kd tree and this is called the range tree and those we want to look at in the next few slides there's one more assumption we do that is that we have general position so we assume that no two points have the same x or y coordinate later we will find out how we can still solve it when there are two points with same x or y coordinate but for now for the description it's much easier that we assume that we don't have this